Okay, Elizabeth from Minnesota, the perfect. She, she has a, even gave me her last name. She gave me the perfect introduction. Elizabeth from Minnesota. Minnesota's, you know, like uh, I think it's up there where all the Scandinavians used to settle. So I got an idea who she is, right? And I know the the level the level of population and all that stuff. What type of culture it is? She wants to know stories of street justice. Um, I was in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and I was in City Soleil, which is supposed to be one of the biggest ghettos on the planet, and it's not. <laughs> and I was quite disappointed because I was expecting to be in a ghetto. And while I'm standing there, me and Matthew were sitting there, and about I don't know, at least 30 or 40 people came dragging some boy that they caught stealing, and they were taken him to the police station. That's kind of unusual that they take him to the police station. They actually just normally just perform the justice in the street. But whatever the case is, they caught somebody and they took him to the police station. Um, um, I don't know what they're going to do with him after that. I didn't see it. Um, in Lago Atalan, they had somebody that was stealing, and um, Lago Atalan, they don't tolerate, this is more of an indigenous community, and they don't tolerate uh, any kind of injustice. So you have communities which don't uh, put up with anything. And uh, Lago Atalan is Panahashel and five or six communities in Lago Atalan. They had somebody come into the area, and it's Tutihil, Kachikel, and these local Indian tribes in a way. They're not really that tribal, but they are tribal. And they tied up the guy and uh, took him in front of the police station in uh, Panahashel, tied him up, and I guess they burned him, killed him. Then they proceeded to burn the two daughters that were with him, and somehow they stopped. I wasn't there, but I know this happened. Um, Let's see, where else have I seen it? In, in Lomi, Togo, here, over by, you know, Kojavi Kopi, within about five blocks from where I'm at right now in the Bellevue Hotel. My friend, I will leave off, watched from his balcony as they, uh, I think they, they basically beat to death some thief in front of his, um, in front of his room, from his balcony. He could look down and watch it. It's just close to Duisburg. Um, I'm, I'm only going to tell you the things that positive happen. I mean, if I went on to the things of stories, they go forever, right? Um, let me think of other things. Um, there's, those are the three stories I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, when I was in Ecuador, um, one interesting thing, which was great, in uh, Quito, Ecuador, in the old town, this is maybe 10 years ago, so <coughs> they had literally the, the business guys had grouped together to hire their own police force to uh, protect the whole street as opposed to just their hotel. Now, street justice, you know, every, everywhere you go, there's some level of this. Um, why do people now? What's interesting, and this is the absurd part, is that when somebody, when you're in a country like Thailand or Lomi Togo or sounds like even Haiti, where they don't tolerate theft, um, in Lago Atalan, they, you know, Guatemala tolerates theft but Lago Atalan doesn't tolerate the theft. So you may have one community that doesn't tolerate anything while everything around it does. So um, when the police are worthless, the people will take over. Um, oh, I was in, uh, I'll, I'll tell you an actual story. I got attacked in uh, Pia de la Cuesta, Mexico, near Acapulco. I was staying there for a long time. And I was on a property, and I'd helped Stan to section off his land so he could get a divorce from a Mexican woman. And this Mexican woman and her uh, boyfriend 
literally got a policeman to stand outside the property. Some reason the police wouldn't come on the property. They came in the property and tackled me. Now I knew that if I beat them silly that I would be held to fall. So they basically dragged me, dragged me, dragged me, dragged me to the street. And what was funny is, uh, oh, this lady, real old lady that worked at Trace Marias, was walking by on her crutches, and she starts waving her crutches. El tranquilo, el tranquilo, el tranquilo. And the whole city, even people I didn't really like, came out to protect me. And they, what they did is they literally worked their way between me and the policeman until they, they just crowded me away from him and got me away and did it. Now, later, I asked Enrique why they did that, and he says, well, you're, you know, you're, you're basically tranquilo. <laughs> okay, he says, you're calm. You don't do drugs. You don't drink. You don't stay out all late. You don't buy prostitutes. You don't do all these things. And they were very afraid the year before um, uh, CNN, no, 60 Minutes had made a report about the, the theft of taxi drivers in, uh, in Mexico City. And they, they were afraid that they would get the kiss of death. And see, this cut tourism down about half because they, they admitted what really happened in a CNN report, not CNN, 60 Minutes thing did it. So I was actually protected by the vigilantes of the community because they didn't really want me to go to the police. At the end of the day, it's about, they, you know, vigilante forces don't put up with people. I mean, normal people are much worse than the police, okay? The police are looking for money. The normal people want justice. So, and their justice is black and white. They're, they're liable to just kill the guy. And in a way, mm, I'm not totally against it. Okay, organic, she calls it organically deal with crime. This is organically dealing with crime. Uh, organically means that the local people do it. The bad part is that sometimes gossip starts and uh, the gossip can turn into danger for a person that didn't do anything. Okay, the, she wants to compare this to the police states of the USA and Europe. Um, I think I'm in a police state while there is no law. A police state is where you can't complain about the police. Uh, while, to me, if it's not saying... I mean, we have a very... We have... You can't move in the United States without breaking a law and paying a fine. But the chances of you actually getting arrested and... Uh, Going to jail accidentally is pretty small. I'll give a real story. I was on house arrest uh, in the United States for a year. Well, they let me off early. But uh, they had, you know, things you couldn't drink, you couldn't do certain things. You had to, when they called you at night, you had times when you could leave and times when you could come back. But first of all, they gave you three hours a day and then six hours a day. They, get, they let you go to work, but then you had to come home and then you had to pick up the phone. And I was talking to Bob Kay, and I asked him, he was one of my probation officers, I said, this one guy, he came drunk to one of these meetings that we had to attend. They tried to get us to attend these alcohol meetings. It was really stupid, really, really stupid. But he came drunk, and I go, you know, violation. Then then he he sit there, and he, he did this over and over, and you could tell this one guy was violating. And Bob says, we have to have a guy violate the thing up to ten times before we actually throw him in jail. He says, because the police just refuse to throw somebody in prison unless it's beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so be when we go in front of the judge, now, see, there's a difference between the police and the judge. The judge is, is you know, to get thrown in jail, 99.9% you, .9 you deserve it. Um, I don't really want to trust everything to a DNA test and um, all these different things. Uh, but you want to, you know, want to, you know, overwhelming thing. But police state, a police state is when you're afraid of the police. And I, and you see Americans traveling abroad and they go up and ask questions of the police. They're obviously not afraid of the police. I'm afraid of the police. I never, ever get near a policeman outside the USA. I don't care what country it is. Inside the USA, I'll ask him question. Outside the USA, I refuse. It's got to be the most stupid thing you can do is to ask a question of a policeman in one of these countries like Togo, Ghana, 
Guatemala, Peru, Mexico. Mexico, they're so bad, it's ridiculous. You might as well just ask to pay a bribe. Okay, police states are not... Police states, to me, mean a place where you're basically afraid of corruption in the government. Um, United States is not that kind of police state. Does it have an over-surplus of politically correct enforcing the rules that if I say something just a little bit honest, they're going to attack me? Yes. Um, that is the police state, the political correctness. I can't say, I can't say what I really believe in America in front of people or somehow they're going to, by accusation, denigrate me to a point where I could lose my business. If I say that anything honest, they will do it. But that's not dangerous. That's just a sort of political correctness going on amok. Uh, police state is when the police walk into your house without a, without a warrant and do anything they want. I, I'll give a true story here. I was in Atapami, Togo. I was taking a video of myself, so I pointed the camera at myself, and the pharmacy was behind me. Some reason the police thought I was taking a video of them. A video. A picture. I mean, obviously a camera. The same camera I'm using. And so I get hauled to the police station and that's the pommy. And I sit in the police station for an hour explaining to it. Luckily the guy that was there, <coughs> he looks through my pictures and says, there are no pictures of you. As if a picture of a policeman is a crime. And, and this is the point. A picture in a police state is a crime. It doesn't matter if it's law or legal or whatever. You can actually go to jail for just taking a picture. Um, in America, if we, when anybody would get attacked by the police, everybody would be pulling out their cell phone and making a video trying to sell it to CNN, right? Um, in police states, uh, Journalists die on a regular basis. Supposedly in the Philippines, there's 100 journalists die per year. And it's kind of a police state. Okay, Elizabeth, very good question. Please give me who you are, what you are, and so I can empathize with your position.